And what I love is just garnishing with the pieces that you cooked with the curry. But doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. I know it's going to taste sensational, isn't it? What I'm going to show you is a Balinese seafood dish. But first of all, what we need to do is we need to make a fish paste. So we're going to put everything into a bowl, our candle nuts, garlic, and you think, oh, what a drama having to get all these things at home. Ginger, there's lots of things. But if you do this once and do it in a good amount, make it, cool it down overnight, next day into a nice tray, freeze it out into a Ziploc bag, you'll have a piece of bumbu bali forever, won't you? Here we've got some turmeric, which you can easily buy in New Zealand now. It's been peeled and chopped up. Tomatoes. Our chilies, which you've tasted. And our shallots. Dried shrimp paste. And our ground up coriander. I haven't even ground it up yet, and it's starting to smell pretty good. In we go, over here. Here we go, look at that. So now it's pureed out quite quickly. So all done. Onto the heat and some coconut oil. Mm. And a lot of people go, coconut oil, but coconut oil is so good for you. It is one of the healthiest oils on the planet. So there we are, we're getting some oil in here. And we don't want to catch this. Now we're going to cook this out very slowly for a good sort of 45 minutes to an hour. Now you could put it in a pressure cooker once it comes up to a simmer, we could put our pressure cooker lid on there. Pressure cookers are cheap to buy now, and what do they do? They trap the flavour inside. Because if we cook away in this pot here for an hour, our kitchen is going to smell so good it's ridiculous. But we don't want our kitchen to smell good, we want our food to smell good, right? So that's where pressure cookers are great. That's where sous vide cooking is great. Because we trap flavour in, we don't make the kitchen smell great. And it is quite good to stand here while it first starts, because yeah, it does it smell so great. good. <laughs> mm, it does smell delicious. It really does smell good. Last thing, it's come up to the heat. We've got our tamarind water. And that, with our fish, is going to add a lovely flavour. In it goes. That's come up to heat there. On with our pressure cooker lid and it would be just a case low heat for 40 minutes 30 to 40 minutes all done after it's cooked and it's cooled down there we have our paste and you know this is yummy stuff you guys should have a taste of it just a little bit because it's gonna be really strong mm. thank you it's delicious. not bouncing with chili is it because in the Balinese culture, they serve the sambals on the side, so then you can add however much heat you want to, rather than us telling how much heat to put in. So now our paste is ready. We've got our seafood here. A little selection. We've got a beautiful piece of mahi-mahi. We've got some prawns that have been deveined, and we've got some squid. Mm, perfect. Nice. What's a good trick for m making squid tender? Milk. Milk's one, yeah. A little bit of kiwi fruit. Mm. Oh, okay. So I want to get some of our paste in here now. Imagine, you know, you just pull this out of the freezer, you've got a cube, and you let it thaw out. It's just like that secret weapon that you're going to have in the freezer. You've got bumbu barley any night of the week. There we go, you can see that's going to start to marinate. Lovely, the colour of the turmeric coming through there. There we go. Now, if we were lucky enough to have a sous vide at home, we could pop it into a Ziploc bag, vacuum pack it, and we could sous vide this fish, couldn't we? Which would be really good. But if we don't have a sous vide at home, we might have a crock pot. Yeah. So we could use a crock pot. Crock pots are about 60 degrees, ah. which is about 10 degrees hotter than I'd like it to be, but it'll just cook a little bit quicker. So all you would do cool. is grab a Ziploc bag and start putting all your seafood in there. Then we've got a mahi-mahi, I've got my prawns, and I've got my squid there calamari, all marinated. You could have that in the fridge until you're ready. And then it goes into your sous vide cooker. We've got a sous vide cooker. So we'll pop that one in here. It's all ready to go. 49 degrees, 50 degrees is where you want this guy to be at. And it goes, 15 minutes, we'll be ready. 
Now, if you haven't got a sous vide cooker, I'm sure you've got a Ziploc bag, maybe a crock pot. Got one of these hiding over here. <laughs> in it goes into there. And we'll be looking at about eight to 10 minutes there. Wow. And if we don't have any of that sort of stuff, we can get it on here. And we can take a little bit of oil on a low heat, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to cook our fish sous vide on a low heat or in a crock pot on a low heat because slowly cooking fish is a, a beautiful thing. Otherwise, it's all cooked on the outside. You have the mad effect on the outside, but you've got raw fish on the middle. By the time it's cooked in the middle, what happens? You've got dry fish. Yeah. So I'm not going to put much of this in. Well, what do you think, Heinz, about that much? More. More. <laughs> yeah. Don't be stingy. <laughs> Showing the love. Oh, what the hell. So I've got about three ice cubes full in there. So now, lemongrass. And we've got some kaffir lime leaves, and we've actually got a lime. And are you guys feeling in the mood? Yeah. You're in the mood? Always going for chilli. Well, I have to think, you don't want to overpower this, do we? Bruising the lemongrass. There you go. But not all the way, you can see, because I want this not to fall apart because it'll be all sinewy. Kaffir lime leaves in there. You see, I've just got this on a very low heat. Now, because you guys want a little bit of chilli, you want to bruise the chilli, so... We're just giving them a, just that little opening up there. And we'll put one in, right? We'll go gently, because these will be at a little bit of heat. We don't want to blow the fish apart, right? It's not a chicken curry. I can really smell the starting to come out now. So I'm going to put some chicken stock in here. It's a good time to be tasting now. And then I can see, hey, do I need salt? Because there was no salt that went into the paste, did it? I do like the idea of just a little squeeze, lime, and a drop in, a little bit of seasoning. And, you know, always be tasting about this stage. And what I love about this Balinese cooking is that all those flavours start to come in here. It's not just one dimensional. There's so many things going on and it's not really salty or anything like that. It's just lovely and fresh tasting. So here we go. Look at that. A bag of deliciousness cooked where we've retained all the flavour in there. We should have a taste of this, right? Yeah, come, and, come and have absolutely. a little taste. Actually, let's just open this bag up. <laughs> and see, like, you don't even need a sauce or a curry or anything going on here. Really flavorful. Now, I'm going to just quickly... <laughs> I'm going to put what I think will take the longest to cook in here will be the prawns yeah. and the mahi-mahi. And look at the low heat I've got it on. It's just ticking away there. Just ticking. In go the prawns. Here we go. The squid. Look at our fish bubbling away there. But again, it's not boiling its head off, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just ticking away. This is really simple cooking. You think all I've done is taken something that I've made that would have been in the freezer out, put it onto the fish, let it marinate for a little bit, some stock out of the cupboard, kaffir lime, one chilli, yeah. and a little bit of bruised lemongrass. And the lemongrass is a great thing to grow in your garden because it keeps the mosquitoes away. Mm. Look at that. What amazes me how, by just putting some coconut cream in here, has transformed the sauce. Everything is now cooked, and we are ready to serve. Oh, this just looks so good. <laughs> and what I love is just garnishing with the pieces that you cooked with the curry. But doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. I know it's going to taste sensational, isn't it? So. A standard Balinese meal. Um, standard. Well, I guess if you're at Bumbu Bali, which is the <laughs> best restaurant and cooking school on the whole of Bali, this is what you'd be eating. But doesn't that look fantastic? It really so great. we have our tomato sambal on the side, and this is delicious. It's one of those things that you'd probably have with everything on the side. You've got a lovely little vegetable dish, and of course, there's standard rice. And the thing that I love that they do in Bali is frying the shallots in oil sprinkled on the top of the vegetable and rice dishes. 